at City of Hope and I'm about to go do my pulmonary function test. Let's go. Well, I am back in the car. I'm done with my pulmonary function test. Um, it was difficult. Ooh, I'm so emotional, sorry. I, one of the ways I found my cancer was through my rib pain. And, um, I can't sleep on my left side because it causes a lot of rib pain. My cancer's on my left side. And then I also have to sleep sitting up or like at an incline because um, ever since my first biopsy, I have like nerve damage to where if I sleep flat, I will wake up in excruciating pain and I'll have like um, somewhat debilitating pain for a few days to a week. Um, and a few nights ago, I fell asleep at an incline, so that was good, it wasn't flat, but I fell asleep on my left side, like leaning against the back of the bed, and just for like two hours. And since then I've been in excruciating pain, and it hurts right now. I'm disappointed in myself for causing this pain. right before my pulmonary function test just from falling asleep in a wrong position it hurts to cry you know sometimes the rib pain is better than other times I always have it it's always there, but sometimes it's not as bad. And right now it's really severe. Um, so usually when I have something like this happen where I fall asleep flat or in the wrong position, it'll hurt, you know, for a week or so, or a few days to a week. Um, and I'll, I'll baby it, my, my, my side, and I won't do a lot of lifting. I'll just be really careful, like, um, around the house. So we were really careful this weekend. Kyle did all the cleaning and all the lifting of the kids. So I was hoping it would get better by my pulmonary function test. But it's just as painful as the first day when I woke up uh, from sleeping wrong. I went into the pulmonary function test and the first breathing practice breathing the, the first thing they wanted me to do was breathe in really fast and then breathe out really fast and that's like uh, so embarrassing that uh, I can't cry it hurts that's like my nightmare to breathe in really fast and breathe out really fast like that at least while the pain is bad um, maybe on a on a less painful day would be fine I'm not sure I'll try it <laughs> when when my pain goes away when it's get, it gets better um, but for the first for the first breathing I don't know what it's called to breathe for the first breathing test um, for it to be that really quick inhale and exhale when I did it it caused like a stabbing pain in my side to where it felt like a knife was in me and he kept saying breathe out breathe out and it was like my lung was frozen um, from the pain my body was like freezing and I was trying with everything in me to push out the air and I couldn't. <laughs> it's so silly to be so upset over it. It's just, I feel like I can't do normal things that I used to be able to do. <laughs> and 
I try so hard to take good care of my health and here I am, I can't even do a breathing test without pain because of my cancer. I felt like I was failing, I guess. Um, but, you know, that being the first test was kind of a bummer because then it's like all the babying that I did this weekend to make the pain hopefully get better sooner. It's like it reversed it all. And so then it was hurting me throughout the rest of the pulmonary function tests um, when I would normally be okay just sitting still and doing the other breathing tests. It was like a constant pain after that. And the tech who helped me was so nice. But he had, I had to do it again because it wasn't um, successful the first time because of my body stopping to push out the air, wouldn't let me. So I had to do it again, which hurt, but it was okay. And um, he said he, that it was fine, that he could tell I can breathe, that he could tell I was guarded by the pain. And so he's gonna put a note of that on there for the doctor to see. I don't know if this is like a pass or fail thing. I hope not because <laughs> I need my biopsy. Um, and then the other two tests after that were uh, way more simple. Um, slow inhales and exhales. Um, and I was, I, I did well with those. And then just regular breathing and some resistance breathing. And I did well with those, so that was good. Um, you know, I'm in a lung cancer group online and they all, all the people in it say that these tests are really hard for lung cancer patients and that they're triggering and embarrassing because you, it's kind of like it's getting rubbed in your face that you can't, breathe like a normal person and it's just unfortunate to be in this situation it's no fun but um, hopefully hopefully it's uh, good enough results to where I can get my biopsy I don't know how it works the uh, tech that helped me he was so nice literally the nicest guy I'm so grateful for him. He made me feel super comfortable. Um, I'm gonna go call Kyle now, he's at work, and drive home to see the kids. They're with my dad and my brother. <sighs> Hopefully I'll cheer up on the way home. All right, I stopped crying, mainly because it hurt. <laughs> and I'm trying to pump myself up to feel good about it. Um, I don't know if it's pass or fail. I have an appointment with the pulmonologist on February 2nd, so we will see what he says. Um, hopefully it was good enough to where I can get my biopsy. We will see. Um, I know that I did my best and I tried my hardest, so hopefully that's good enough. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. give you guys a little tour of the bed life because it has to do with the pain I'm in so well the bed doesn't really but the way I slept does so here's our bed this is flower believe it or not she was adopted from the animal shelter because her parents went to jail and now Ellis got his dream dog from an animal shelter oh my gosh oh my gosh flower okay anyways this gorgeous bed is from Ashley and Brad. They bought us a bed, like the bed frame and the bed itself, excuse the stains, white blankets with dogs, not the best idea. 
Um, so we have this fancy remote and it does things where it has the little incline and then the foot of the bed lifts up. So Ashley bought this for me because after my needle biopsy, which the biopsy went through my back or my shoulder or wherever and went into my lung, ever since then I've had like nerve damage. So like the bed goes really... Sometimes I'll do it all the way so you can see. There's me, there's Carl, hi Carl. I had to sleep in a recliner after my biopsy. My parents gave me their recliner and I kept it right here next to the bed because I had to sleep at an incline. Otherwise I would wake up in excruciating pain and have like a debilitating pain for usually about a week after sleeping flat. Okay, the pillows look hilarious. Um, so, Ashley, being the best sister in the world, wanted to do anything to help me on this cancer journey. Ashley has done. She does everything to help me. Anyways, she begged me to let her buy me a bed and um, to be honest, it was hard to say yes because it was so expensive, but um, I saw the true love in my sister's eyes and the true care of wanting to help me and with cancer, you can't really do as much as you want to help people. You know what I mean? Like, if she could, she would take away my cancer. But, um, the bed was the next best thing. <laughs> um, so, she took me bed shopping, bought me a bed, and it's amazing. I love it. I'm in so much less pain because of this bed. Um, but if I sleep wrong, I still get the rib pain. Well, I always have the rib pain, but I will get this bad nerve pain, which is what I had at the appointment today. And I already feel a lot better pain-wise from that appointment. The really sharp or the really fast, hard, deep breaths in and out are what made it do the stabbing pain. And it really hurt to where when I left, I was so sore, just walking, sitting, driving, crying, all of it. But um, now it's already feeling a lot better. Still hurts really bad. And Kyle says I'm queen for the week, even though it's his birthday week. He says I'm queen for the week and I can't do anything. He wants to take care of me and he's just a sweet angel. Um, so here's our bed and, oh, I'm falling over pillows. I'll show you how I sleep and I'll show you what I did to mess up that sleep to where I'm in the pain that I'm in. So I do this pillow every night, then I do this pillow, then I do, Kyle thinks I'm such a nerd with my pillows, don't you? Then I do that pillow. What other pillow do I do? Is that it? That's it. Yeah, sometimes I'll grab an extra pillow as like a cuddle pillow or whatever. Babe, can you be the cameraman? And then I have to sleep sitting up and I have to sleep on my back. Sometimes I was, I was a side sleeper before all of this, so I miss it so much. Sometimes I can cheat and sleep on my right side and be in a little extra pain, but not excruciating pain. But I cannot sleep on my left side, and I cannot sleep flat. So this is what I do to go to bed at night. I sleep like this. Puppies are fun, aren't they? <laughs> the senior dogs. And then I, oh, it also has a vibrate on this bed. I don't know if you can hear it. That's nice. And this is comfortable. Might lean it back a little. It's hard to find that right spot every night. And then Kyle, oh, I have this pretty throw blanket from Bia. You want to show the quote on it? 
It's so pretty. I love it so much. It makes me happy. I love all the colors. Always remember that you are braver than you believe, smarter than you think, and loved more than you'll ever know. And Kyle is hilarious. I'll see if I can find pictures of how he sleeps in this bed. He's so funny. He can't... He can't figure out how to get comfortable in this bed. So he would like try to sleep flat on his stomach um, next to me. Imagine sleeping flat on a bed that is angled like this. Anyway, so he sleeps like this. He gets a pillow. He's not doing the full display, but he gets a pillow and he lays his head over there, gets a, his own blanket and puts his feet feet up there when he painted his toenails. Um, this is how he sleeps. And then I'm over here. And um, Shiloh and Flower sleep with us. Pup sleeps in the hallway. He doesn't like climbing in the bed. Or he doesn't like Flower either. Oh, and then the bed has a light underneath. Let's see if I could show that. That's cool. So when the room's dark, it looks cool. But yeah, I'll show um, some pictures if I can find him of Kyle on the bed. He's hilarious. And, um, yeah, I just want to show you guys. Oh, I want to show you guys how I slept. I'll need you to be the cameraman again. So, I climbed into bed after putting the kids to sleep the other night. And I was so exhausted. And I have my big fluffy... Uh, pillow, mount, mountain pillow. Um, yeah. I have my big fluffy mountain pillow set up to where I climbed in bed. Kyle was over here showing me like Ellis' birthday presents that came in the mail. And I was like, I know I'm not supposed to, I said this, I know I'm not, I'm not supposed to lie on my left side. But I'm just gonna for a little bit. I got like this. And see, it kind of hurts to lay on my side like this, even with the fluffy pillows, but not too bad. And so I was like, wow, these are so soft. I'm so tired. And I fell asleep. And then Kaya fell asleep. And I woke up a couple hours later. And it didn't hurt immediately. And I thought, darn it. I, I know I screwed it up. And then in the morning, I felt it. And it's been really bad ever since. So just sleeping like this. I'm still at the incline, so that's good. But I can't sleep on my side. I can't sleep flat. I have to sleep like this. It's not the best, but this bed makes it comfortable. And I'm so grateful for my bed. Thank you, Ashley and Brad. You guys are the best. I'm so grateful for you guys. Today went well. Today went well. It was hard to let you go. Uh -huh. It went well, yeah. Yeah. Kyle wanted to go with me. <clears throat> but I told him not to because I was able to drive. I was grateful that I had the ability to drive, yeah. not on any crazy, crazy medications preventing me from driving right now. So I wanted to take advantage of it. And you did it with ease. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't have to take off another day of work. And I didn't, wasn't getting any scary news. No. To we where I... We knew it today. Okay to be alone. Yeah, we knew it wasn't going to be like easy, yeah. but we weren't expecting anything scary. We yeah. Got through it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm tired of the moon face. <laughs> I can't wait for it to go away. I hope it goes away. Do you know if it goes away? It goes away. Do you know? Yeah. How I, do you know? I looked it up. You've looked it up? Yeah. Why? Because you're always so concerned about it. You don't like my moon face? I love your moon face. Her just, biggest concern I just during hate, those steroids has been I her hate, moon face. I hate not recognizing myself. That's not my biggest concern. I just hate, I just feel like I'm not myself. I'm tired of it. I follow two cancer warriors who are also on steroids and they have a similar look to me. We have like a general look about us. I've shown him and he agrees. But I still think she's beautiful. Yeah. I tell her every day. 
it's just different. It's just, I see it and I'm reminded of the immunotherapy reaction. I'm reminded of the lack of control I have over what's going on in my body. Um, the steroids taking now, it's two months longer than I was supposed to be on them. It's but... just, I think of all the, it's just a reminder because it's so noticeable to me. But you started to drop, which is good. Yeah, I started to drop steroids. Um, I dropped twice, my dose twice this month, and that's really good, and I haven't had any new rash showing up, and heat triggers the rash, and I've been doing my heat, heating pad on my side pain for this weekend, and I haven't had any new rash come, so that's really good. Mm -hmm. We're hoping I can go down another dose at the end of this week. Fingers crossed. Um, Plus your, it, I, I don't know, but it kind of contributes to your jaw thing too, we mm. think. Mm. We can't figure out if my jaw, so ever since my immunotherapy reaction happened last August, my jaw locks at about this far open and it locks all the time. It's most of the time it's locked, but every so often it opens all the way and today it's letting me open it all the way um which during my test i had to put a pipe thing in my mouth and i needed my jaw to open so it was really good that my jaw was letting it up like letting itself open today and you, you were showing me on when i came home from lunch that it could open mm -hmm. and just so happens that you needed it for your test that's uh -huh. pretty cool yeah that's good because I don't have control over it. It's usually locked, but every so often it pops open and it's nice when it does. Um, I can't figure out if the immunotherapy reaction is causing it to lock, which is what a, a TMJ specialist said he thought it was, that my body was freaking out from the reaction and tightening, locking everything. Um, my cheeks are really tight and then the jaw itself locks. It feels like on the right side where I can't open it all the way. But hopefully that'll get better. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, since I've been tapering the steroids again, some days it's worse and it locks even more and hurts really bad. But then today it was the best day it's been in a while where it was it's opening. Random. It usually won't open like as often as it has today. Yesterday when you like were at your lunch, lunch. At your lunch today, um, at the appointment still. Yesterday when we were eating lunch, I watched you, and it wasn't opening at all. What did we, what did we eat for lunch? I don't know. I think it was salad or something, but you couldn't yeah. get it past, mm. you know? Yeah, I have to, like, cram food in a small opening. No fun. Um, I was glad that I could open my mouth in the test, and I was glad that I did, I would say, two-thirds of the tests well. Mm -hmm. Pretty well. Mm -hmm. You know, the first part. <laughs> Hopefully it was good enough. We'll see. I have my appointment on February 3rd. No, 2nd? Second. February 2nd. And I will meet with the pulmonologist. Hopefully he will say that I'm good enough to have a biopsy and I will be updating you guys with a date of that. We'll see. She called today after the test. And I had told her before the test that it was probably going to be hard because a lot of people in the lung cancer group on Facebook that I follow say that this is a really hard and triggering test because when you struggle with breathing and they have you do a breathing test, it's hard. Mm -hmm. And you called and she sounded so positive. She said, hey, and I said, oh, hold on. So I ran out of the class. I said, how'd it go? You sound great. And then, oh, 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 oh. and it was really hard. And then she let it all out and said how it was really, really painful because of the... It was just so painful, man. I'm so pain. bummed that I had this yeah. flare-up of pain right... But... Right um, at the time of my pulmonary function test, whatever. You got it done. I did, yeah. Good. Um, got home safely, did it all. I wore some fun bracelets. So thanks for listening to me cry and chat. Um, I know these are long chatty videos. It's 
It's like I should say at the beginning, get your popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> gonna Grab a seat. A it's going to be a long one. Um, it's hard to be vulnerable on camera and cry, but I really enjoy documenting this journey. I think it'll be nice to look back on. I think it could possibly help someone else going through this or through something similar. And if worst case scenario ever happens, it'll be nice for my kids to have something to look back on and see, see what happened. Yep. It's important. Mm -hmm. Your birthday's in two days. He's turning 32. 32? He's my youngin. I'm 34. I'll be 35 this year. That's right. I'm the baby. <laughs> We're going to bake you cookies. Cookies. You're going to go to work. We'll You're going to have a meeting. We'll have some nice family time after work. We don't know what we're doing yet, but... He can't decide. He can't decide on the special birthday dinner. Thanks for watching! Thanks for watching! We love you guys. Thank you so much for the continued positive thoughts and prayers. It truly means so much <clears throat> to me and us. All of the comments on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. Everyone's so nice. And it makes me feel like we are less alone. This journey is so scary. And it's nice to know we have support and people along for the ride. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah, we need it. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Next time I post one of these, or as I keep posting these, because apparently it's going to be a thing, um, put some headphones in. <laughs> no. Wash the dishes while you listen. Fold some laundry while you listen. Soak in a bath. Treat yourself while you listen. I got some nice bath salts from my friend Nee. I'm looking forward to a bath. I haven't had a bath in a long time. I shower. Um, because heat triggers the immunotherapy rash to come back. And I don't want that to happen. So um, hopefully since it hasn't been coming back, I can take a bath again soon. Maybe soon. I'm excited. All right. Thanks for watching.